VR technology can enhance the storytelling by simply placing you as a viewer to become an actual character. So it feels like the story is happening to you. You are part of the story, you are interacting. We like to envision VR or AR as a, as a physical installation. That's how we start, as a space you enter. And the experience for us starts before you enter. But it also goes even after you take off the headset. I was born in, in Serbia, in Belgrade, uh, and my father is, is a theater director. So actually I grew up in a theater, and what he did in the 80s, he brought theater to the streets of Belgrade, where actors were interacting with, with the audience. My influence through life is also performance art, but as well film, that, that is what I studied. And, and somehow VR brought all of it together. The inspiration for Tree came because I wanted to speak about how we as humans destroy nature. What if we place you as a user in shoes of nature? Everything around you is 3D, uh, it's real time and you can move. You start as a, as a seed underground and you grow, your arms are branches, you can move the tree. And when you look down, your body is the trunk of a tree. When you're underground, you can smell the soil. When you're above the ground, you can smell a rainforest. You can feel the warmth of the sun. As you're growing, you feel vibrations in your own body. And we also use wind, so you can feel the wind in a rainforest. Once you rise all above other trees, that's the moment when humans come into the rainforest and take it all away from you. The most important thing for Tree was for you to not witness it firsthand, to be there while, you know, these terrible things are happening in the rainforest but instead to be the tree. You know, immersive technology has the profound ability to have a perspective shift. If they put themselves in the shoes or the roots of the tree, they can feel more connected to that subject. We understand that the issues are very complicated, but we feel very strongly that we're pushing the needle in the right direction. I was very young, when I was about eight years old, the war broke in Yugoslavia, and Yugoslavia divided into different countries. Then towards the end of the 90s, uh, Serbia was bombed. I saw what is it to, you know, when, when the economy crashes, when people don't have money to, to buy food. The reason I made Giant was because I wanted to speak about what happens to innocent families in conflict zones. You're watching a family who has a six-year-old daughter and they cannot tell her it's a war. So they tell her it's a friendly giant knocking down the buildings that is approaching their building and wants to play with a little girl. Can you see a giant? Maybe. I went up to the roof. How close? I want to play with Sarah. Honey. Oh, sweetie, Sarah's family's already left. Did you see anything? Oh, the giant's going south. Seems he's only interested in power plants. <gasps> Daddy, I do a hawk. <laughs> That's good. What's that? We witnessed probably like tens of thousands of people, you know, taking off the headset and seeing their reactions. And it's been a very powerful experience for us to, to be there uh, because that's the reason we created them, was for the audience to hopefully feel something and understand something new. Is that what I think it is? Me neither, baby. Me neither. Can VR prevent war? VR can contribute to more understanding about different aspects of war. Specifically for decision makers, it could be beneficial that they go through simulated uh, war experience before making decisions about, you know, someone else's lives. I think we as humans, we can the most relate to problems that are immediate to us, that are like our problems. So I think VR can almost create a problem for you, it can put you in someone else's problem. And that's how you can understand someone else's side. Hyundai Motor, connecting art and technology.